Hello, this is Jim Sal from Jim Sal Pews. Today we're going to replace a tip on a shaft. We're going to replace it with a, an armet. Um, the shaft size, on the, the tip on the shaft is now about between 5 and uh, 12.5 and, and 12.6, 7, something like that. We're going to replace it with a, a 13 and we'll be trimming it down for size. So let me get over to the lathe, set up the camera, and then we'll get started. Okay, well the first thing we want to do is um, remove the, the old tip. As you can see, there's, there's very little leather left on this tip. It uh, looks to be a, um, a pad. Uh, why there's a pad on there, I'm not sure. It's usually to, to for vibrations on, on carbon fiber and sometimes on wood chips. If they're hollow, I, I don't believe this is a hollow one. Doesn't look like a, uh, it's not a low deflection, it's not a pie shape cut. Uh, it's about most likely solid. Uh, so I, I've already sharpened my, my tooling because we want really sharp tooling when we do this because we're working at close proximity. So let me get the lead started here. What I'll do is I'll just start taking a little bit at a time. Can take the whole tip off. I'm not sure what kind of tip is on here right now. It look, looks to be a layer tip. It's hard to tell because the tooling is so sharp it's going to cut it off clean anyway no matter what it is. Still a little bit of tip on there. Okay, that might not be a pad, it just may be a um, a replacement indicator and usually they're up a little further on the tip <sighs> oh, it doesn't look to be a pad it does look to be a pad and it's it seems to be nice and clean okay We'll leave that pad on there, we'll go right up against the pad. Okay, at this point, what I'm going to do, that's a nice clean, nice, nice finish. Um, I have a piece of sand plate paper on a block. On a block. I use the rough up the, um, in this case it's going to be the, the pad. Now, to make sure that it perfectly as you can see how I roughed it up it's it's perfectly all the way around so you don't want to go in one side I've seen some guys get a piece of sandpaper and just put it in their hand and, and go like this it's not really um, advisable I think because you, you have a tendency to to move one way or the other and, and create a bevel on this tip and and uh, you'll have some kind of void in there when you put the new tip on which is 
you're going to be much straighter. So again, make sure that the, the tip that you're putting on here, um, or the the um, the preparation is just as straight as the tip that you're putting on there. So you get a full bond, 360 degrees. Um, so that's good there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rough up the the tip we're going to install. This is the tip we're going to install. It's an iron myth. It's a medium. It's a layered. Looks like maybe about 10 layers. So this is the glue area here. So what we want to do put on a flat surface and go in a rotary motion. You don't want to go back and forth. Again, the same thing can happen. You can, you can create an uneven surface by going back and forth. So you want to go circular motion and then when you see that all roughed up evenly that's a good good thing right, so put that down now we're going to get select our fixture for this it's going to be this one right here perfect okay we'll be uh, applying some siren accolade gel and then put it in the tailstock and push it up against the um, the furl and the the, the, um, the pad and then we'll press it somewhat and then we'll let it set for about five minutes and some guys will just get the you'll see on e on YouTube a lot of guys just get the the tip Whoops. With their hand, and just go like that for about I don't know, five, ten seconds, and that's it. Uh, Siren Activate, yeah, three second stuff. Unless you're using the uh, the Rapid Fuse, which is Siren Activate gel with a retardant, which allows you to use it over a period of 30 minutes and then at the 30 minutes bang it's done uh, I use that for some things too as well but uh, here we're going to just use the uh, siren acrylate gel super glue uh, I like it in the tube get these tubes from Harvard Freight siren acrylate is siren acrylate okay and the only difference is is how it's prepared and there's all different viscosities. Uh, a gel is what you want here because you don't want it running off and you want you want to hold a certain amount of the adhesive on the tip and in between the uh, in this case we don't have a lot of absorption with the plate but normally when you're going up against wood in the furrow usually you get the furrow of thin furrow maybe I don't know, three millimeters and everything else is wood inside that wood absorbs. It absorbs that that siren uh, and and the leather absorbs it. You roughed it up enough, it it absorbs it. Uh, so you want to make sure that you put an adequate amount. A lot of guys will say, just put a drop. No, no. If you don't put enough, it's not going to work. You got to make sure you have enough there. Anyway, before we do that, um, I like to just make some some cuts in here very very slight I'm not pushing just want to let the uh, the knife the blade just ride along here I'm going to make some this it just tells me gives me a feel for one of the tip that I'm putting on here I mean all the different tips I can tell the difference in, in, the, in the leather how it's prepared how it's treated uh, by doing this uh, I just this is a fairly the medium tip is like a, a it's not too hard not much different than a Kamui it's the same as a Kamui some are softer some goes in there further deeper incisions and and some are really hard and again this is like a medium it maybe it reflects the, the actual hardness of the tip. Anyway, I do perpendicular. I do some lines. This perpendicular makes like a crisscross, like a little block. It allows the adhesive to get in there even more. 
thorough. Okay. Right now we can see. You don't want to just put a drop in and push it and let it spread out. You want to spread it out. Put some adhesive in there. Don't worry about excess. I'm going to be clamping this so tight. There's not going to be any excess inside. The excess will come out and I'll just remove the excess. But that way I will be sure that I'm getting enough. Nothing's going to happen here until we clamp these together. Because the siren acolyte actually works by forming a, a reaction with the ions of the two products that you're joining. And it's amazing. Uh, a little different than a, pro a proxy, but similar effect. Alright, so we clamp it. Um, we'll squeeze it tight. Nice and tight. You see that, that adhesive coming out of there. I'm going to give it a turn. I'm going to remove some of this now. This that I'm removing will never get hard. It's got it's got to be have contact between the two parts that you're adhering together, and it creates a um, a bond and a reaction, which actually it dries and gets hard. It's, it's amazing stuff. This stuff was actually created during the Vietnam War for um, battlefield wounds to close wounds quickly. I mean, you could put it on there and clamp your fingers together and close a wound. And it probably saved a lot of lives because uh, guys, you know, would bleed out on the field. It'd be very easy to bleed out on the field. You just get a, a bandage and hold it, and, and that bandage is going to absorb the uh, the blood and everything. But if you can close a wound, and it's kind of difficult to perform like uh, stitches out in the field and all. So this was a godsend, and I'm sure it saved it saved lives. Well, they found that it's got other uses too. Got other uses. Okay. That's, that's actually already, you can see the whole tip is moving with it. Uh, but I like to leave it on there five minutes anyway. It's just just a thing, that's all. Uh, okay, so let me, let me just we'll wait about five minutes and I'm going to we we'll get back to that. Now I just want to show you. Um, I replaced the tip for someone. Um, he had a um, a, pre a predator shaft um, on a three fourteen one of those varieties, uh, which is a pie shape cuts in the wood uh, on an eight or ten pie shape joined together uh, where supposedly wherever you hit it on the period is, is a sweet spot so uh, but this one was hollowed out it was hollowed and probably to make it lighter to allow it to be lighter to remove some of the material uh, that, that adds to the weight to remove it and then it had a a small furrow. I'm not sure if it was because it was all it was all messed up when I got it. The, the furrow was actually cracked. The guy put it back on with some super glue, and, and it was a mess. Uh, I believe it's just a like a little. I, I think it was a wood hydraulic wood furrow. Uh, capsulated over top of that with a. Uh, plastic type bar or composite, whatever it is, whatever they use, over top of that, sleeved over top of it and over the existing part of the shaft. Uh, all this was very thin. 
That's why it cracked on, on the guy. Yeah, I didn't use it as a brake cure or nothing. It just cracked every time because it was very, very thin. All trying to, all of this engineering trying to reduce the, the weight at the tip um, supposedly allows less deflection doing that. I don't know. Anyway, this one I made, I actually, this is a salad. Now, if you look at Miyusi. Miyusi uses, back in the 70s, they started out, uh, they were one of the first ones, if not, they, they claimed to be the first one that made a low deflection cube, but the way they made it was not the pie shape uh, type of cues that they, a lot of the, a lot of manufacturers make today, like Predator. I think Predator maybe might have been one of the first ones to do that. Anyway, um, what they did is they put a hydraulic spur on there, uh, where they hollowed out part of a, a solid. Now this is a solid hard rock maple uh, shaft, no pie shape. It's nice and true, real nice and straight, like an arrow. They hollowed it out and inserted, I think it's a half inch, went into the, to the uh, edge of the shaft and then the rest protruded as a furrow. Well, I did something similar to that. I went in probably a half inch, maybe five eighths, and protrude it with a uh, with the furrow out maybe another three eighths or half inch something like that. Then I sleeved it over top with another furrow over top of the wood, similar to the way Predator did it, but not the same materials. And I'm not I'm sure it's not specifically exactly the way they did. It. Anyway, um, and this may have actually well I use all. It's JAMA. It makes a nice hit, though. It makes a nice hit. It, it actually, I don't know if it reduced the weight. I doubt if it re reduced any weight because it is not hollowed out. And I probably added a little bit of weight to the end of it. Who knows? But talking uh, very, very little. But uh, I've been playing with this. It's a, it's a 12.5. And I've been shooting with this, and I really like it for some reason. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's, there's so many possibilities in the, in the shafts and the tips and furrows and, and low deflection and all this, but it's really a, a personal preference. The best way to do it is not to go on the internet and, and read all these things and say that it's the best. It's going gonna, it's gonna to up your game and, and, and increase your sh shot making and stuff like that. You have to actually try these things out for yourself, uh, and that's that's really the best way to do it. Uh, it's easy for me to do because you know I fiddle around with cues. I got a lot of lot of uh, uh, material here, and I make cues, and I can change the tip, and I can do. I play with a soft tip, I play with a medium tip, I play with a harder tip, and and, and different tips, and solid leather tips, and. The, and the, I don't see a whole lot of difference between the layer tips and the solid layer and the solid tips, really. Uh, then I, I put a milk dud on for a couple milk duds on for a, a fella or a carbon fiber. He loves it. He loves, it. and that's it. That's what that's what it's all about. If you like it and it works for you, voila. So um, our five minutes is up, and it probably took more than five minutes. Uh, we're going to get back to the lathe and we're going to continue on uh, trimming this tip and shaping it. Okay. See what we have here. Oh, they're pretty even. All right. What we'll do is we're going to trim it with the lathe. We have a considerable amount to trim off of it. Yeah. 
the thing is here, we don't want to go, we, we want to cut down on the RPMs, something like that. Enough to cut it clean, but not too much to heat it up. Because if you heat this adhesive up, you'll start delaminating the layers, especially when we start um, shaping it, because the layers become smaller and smaller and smaller as we get to the middle. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, some of the, the cheaper tips, and I've experienced this, will, as you're shaping them, they'll actually delaminate and fall off. The ones with the superior adhesive, uh, and I have to say the Kamui, and, and all the, pretty much all the, the premium tips out there that they claim that they're, that they're a good tip and they use good uh, adhesives and good, good process. A lot of them are, are uh, like the Kamui from Japan, or like the pig skin that's, that's uh, processed with vegetable or certain vegetable oil that they use. Uh, and the, uh, but I find the adhesives is important. And yes, their adhesives, they hold very well and they're easy to shape. So whatever they're doing, uh, they're, they're doing it well. So let's That's as far as we're going to go with the lathe. We're almost, we're almost right there, if not there. But the rest we're going to do with a sharp, brand new razor blade. Get my new blade out. And um, the I don't know if it's the process of the leather, the adhesives. Or, or what with this um, but every every time I use a razor blade these are sharp blades these are utility blades okay they, normally in in the, um, the carpentry field or the construction field these will last a little a little bit uh, you know you know you just use them one time and replace them it, when they don't they end up getting dull and they're just not cutting anymore that's it when you replace them but here what happens, it dulls this so quick on this side, and then I'll flip it around, it'll dull it on this side, and I really can't get it over here because then I'm, I'm, I'm chancing hitting the lathe and I don't want to do that. So pretty much every time I do a tip, it's a new blade. It's a new blade. So same thing with the, uh, the leather wraps. I have to use a brand new blade, flip it over, use the other side when I make the other cut. Uh, for some reason, leather, it, um, it it makes blades dull. All right, let's just see where we're at here. I don't want a chance hitting the furrow. So, I mean, I will uh, do a little sanding and cleaning up on this furrow. Maybe get some of the blue. I might not get this blue out of here because it might be impregnated into the furrow. But what we'll do is we'll, and I'll use a, um, a, a thousand grit sandpaper, which, you know, I'm not going to take anything off here. You're going to take the shine off it, and that's about it. Uh, you'll, you'll see when I get to that. Uh, I, I use a little bit uh, more on the, the tip itself on the sides, but uh, not when I do the final pass, it'll be like a thousand grit all the way across. I just basically make the, the um, it, it pretty much the same now. I mean, <laughs> 
I don't know. It, you can see that, but it, it's it's way on. All right. So what I'm going to do. Bear with me a second. I will get a little bit of water on a paper towel. I like to wet this because it makes it a lot easier to trim. I don't know, these are good tips. These are good tips. I could tell just by the way they're, they're, they're machining here. Our method is a, is a pretty recognized company, trade name, and they make the balls, they make a lot of different things, um, accessories for the, the pool game. And they've been around a long time, so no wonder they're going to give you a quality tip. Uh, I can tell just by the way this machine is really, really nice, really nice. Equal, equal at least to a, I, I compare everything to, to the Camille. Everybody swears by the canoe, like it's the only tip around. There's dozens of tips, and a lot of them are just made just like the canoe. With pure salt, the same thing. It's pig skin with the vegetable, treat it, process, uh, but it comes from China, so it's a lot cheaper. It's a $5 tip in comparison to a $25 tip. Put on your pewter, your pewter, like, don't tell the the, uh, the chef, the chef won't know the difference. Alright. We're getting down to the nitty gritty here. Alright, we're going to put a, um, a dime shape. I'm just going to do this by eye. I'm not going to get a dime and put it up there. I'm just going to do it by eye. What a dime shape should look like. Just like that. Now if you notice how when when I came around, I'm going to actually give it a little bit more on the edge there, so I don't I want to make sure that I ease the edge. Because you don't want to hit a cue ball and hit that edge. Cue ball can go one way or the other way. So you want to at least uh, give it the opportunity to go in the direction that you want it to go. But as they go in the middle, you can see that whoop, very, this is a layer right here, right on the edge. It's a layer. Look how tight that is. That, that, that's a quality tip. Now, this is what I call a quality tip. I had cheaper tips um, that once you get close to that, they start popping off. It's the adhesive. Adhesive that they use is very important. You're able to trim it really nice too. I'm just going to ease the edge here. Just like that. Alright. Just going to double check the edge here. Just make sure that the uh, it's uh, pretty even. We're going to uh, dress it up a little bit with a little bit of sandpaper. Uh, let me see, that's going to be our, uh, right, do here. Right. Let me get some three 
20. It's not too cold. Not too cold. Alright, we're going to start off with a little bit. 320 on the, uh, the actual leather. It's a reverse that. This is a very fine sandpaper, 320. All I'm doing is smoothing out the, the leather. Uh, we're tooling on the lathe and the razor blade uh, roughs up the leather somewhat. So this, this makes it a little tighter. Now what we're going to do is a thousand dread. I'm going to go over the furrow and see where we're, uh, we're at with that. I don't want to go over this. I don't want to take any of the finish off. Um, you notice that a lot of that blue goes right through the finish, whatever they finish with. with. Um, so we don't, want to, we don't want to take that down. I'm just going to go over the furrow a little bit. And it cleaned it up nicely. Clean it up nicely. Okay. You see, it, it took most of the blue off of there. Some of it's still maybe impregnated in the end there, but that's all we want to do because it, it, it's nice and straight. So we can do it. You know, clean it off with a little rag here. Burnish it. Burnish the tip a little bit. That also helps the, the fibers uh, nice, get nice and smooth and, and solid. It's a, it's a. All right, we have uh, a lot of tip here. You can actually see the layers, and we have a we have a good shape. We have a good shape. Uh, and you're going to use one of those shapers occasionally because as you hit this, it's not going to mushroom as much as a solid uh, leather tip. Uh, but after a while, they mushroom a little bit. So you, know, you just want to get some sandpaper and, or one of those tip shapers and, and, and tape it because sometimes you, um, it might flatten out a little bit. Just, if you don't do that, the tip ends up being real flat on the end. and and it may change your game somewhat. So at this point what I like to do is finish it off with a little mink oil. Mink oil, it's not, it's not a uh, petroleum product, petroleum based product. You don't want to use a petroleum based product because you don't want to change, you don't know what kind of adhesives in between all these layers. You don't want to chance a petroleum pro uh, based product getting in there and, and dissolving the adhesive, whatever adhesive it is. So I use a mink oil. Mink oil is not petroleum base. It is milk fat base. That's all it is. It doesn't actually penetrate. It just stays on the surface. It's good for like a, all kinds of leather, leather jacket, leather glove, whatever you're going to use it for. It conditions it. So what we want to do is just get a little bit on your finger. Just condition. This ain't a bad idea to do to a tip normally. Um, as you play with a tip, it you know it can dry out, especially if you don't change your tip for quite a while, and you subject your tip to all kinds of conditions. You leave it in the car in the heat, uh, different humidity, everything changes. I mean, leather is a, is a natural product, just like wood. It moves around the same. So you put a little bit of mink oil on there and and, and just condition the tip. It just conditions the outside of the tip. Uh, it'll protect it, uh, seal it a little bit, seal it from the, from the environment. And we all need some sealing from the environment. Alright. There, there we have the Aramis tip. There's a lot of there's a lot of time playing on this tip. Um, I mean, I left a lot of the tip. Some guys like the, they like a little less tip. 
but that's insignificant. But you can, as you, whatever tool you're going to use to uh, to shape it, like something like this, um, and then you, you you beat it up with the with the needle, so it, the uh, the chalk gets into the tip, and then what that does to the tip, I don't know, it might even loosen up the leather fibers a little more, and then as you take, it's going to go down, it's going to wear down and wear down, like you've seen this tip was almost down to that pad, eventually that'll get that, that's your, but you have a long life on this tip right here, it, of course depending on how much you use it, you use the tip frequently, and you're going to want to tool it a lot, because you want to scrape up the leather a little bit, so you get the, uh, uh, the chalk adheres to it and, it and it grips the balls you're going to be taking more of the leather off quicker uh, but then again if you don't use it that much it's going to dry out because it's just going to be on it a lot of guys especially with soft tips they, they change their tips every every few months uh, because they mushroom and they become harder and as they become harder they're not playing with a soft tip anymore and their English starts to change. They start to notice this because um, you, a soft tip is going to allow you to grip the ball more and, and put devastating English on the ball. And if you're used to that and you wonder why I'm, uh, I'm putting the English on there but it's just not getting over where I, I need it to be, then maybe your tip is getting a little too hard. So, um, and it can go from a soft to actually a hard tip. It bypass that medium, just go right to hard, depending on the the process it was uh, it was manufactured with. Who knows? There, there's so many variations. Nobody can say for sure this is better than this and that. But I can tell you, but from tooling these, this is a good tip. Look at how that stayed together. I'm going to take this, remove this, and I'm going to look at this a little further. And with this, I I just I put one on my shoe that I'm using now. I'm happy with it. Doesn't doesn't have a glamorous name. You don't hear much about them. So I don't know. You know, I don't know if if, if knowing that you have a Kamui tip makes you play any better, or or a navigator, or or a tagger, or many many other. There's they're coming out all the time, new and and probably the same. All right. So here's here we have. Look at that. That very edge, the very edge is still there. I took very little off that you needed to take off. We could sand that off a little bit. That's not a big deal. That'll wear off anyway. It's just the edge of the leather. But that very little tip is still there. I mean, that, that's how good the uh, adhesive is on this tip. It's a very good tip. I would say it's a quality tip for, for, I mean, leather is leather, you know. Whether, you know, pig skin is pig skin, okay. Buffalo skin, of course, is, is, is I believe, is harder. I think they, they only produce, like, real hard tips, real hard tips. But I guess with the pig skin, it's, it's uh, depending on how you compress them, you could manage the, uh, the hardness a little easier. You can actually, like, convert it. A lot of them come with a super soft, soft, medium, hard, extra hard, you know, so you can do that. Some tip, some, maybe buffalo, you can't, you can't produce a soft tip at all with a buffalo, maybe not even a medium, just so hard. So, here we have it. Okay, so that was our installation of, of the tip. Uh, that's the way I do it, just about all, all the time, all the time. Uh, different shafts by different manufacturers. Like I said, the Predator shaft. You get be a little careful with that. A lot of them they come with the the tab. That little uh, tab and some with, without the tab. I don't put the tabs on there. My shaft typically. My shafts um, did the furrow and then um, I'm going to be up against the wood. Uh, the original is, is one without. No, no. 
no tip or curl at all. Look at the the, uh, the collar and the, the joint insert first before I do the, the tip. Um, but that's that's what we have as far as the tip. Okay. So um, until the next time, Arrivederci.